Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video in the Golang series. We are trying to build an API for courses and this is the place where we go ahead and inject something into our database. Yes, I know this is just a slice but let's assume this is a database and we want to inject some value into this. So there are a lot of precautions that can come into this. Since you are adding some values in the database, you can create a lot of checker methods to make sure that user is not sending any malicious data or not trying to just uh, play around with you. You actually receive some data. So let's go ahead and create this method. I'll give you one assignment as well. So let's go ahead and figure it out on the go. So let's go ahead and work. And I can actually minimize this so that it doesn't consume too much of our space. And there we go, nice and easy. Let's go ahead and call this one as function. And this function will be uh, create one course. So that's basically it is doing. This method is responsible for creating one course or adding just, just one data into our database. And just like always, we're gonna go ahead and borrow this one up. Now here are a couple of interesting things that you should keep in mind. And uh, let me just walk you through with that. First, which is going to make my life a little bit miserable, is this course ID. Now the course ID, I've marked it as a string. If I can mark this one as integer, that would be super easy in this case. I can just go ahead and generate a random number and just add it up there. Voila, job done. And I can make that random number a little bit bigger so that it doesn't really conflict with that. So that is easier. But I've made my life a little bit uh, tough by making course ID as a string. So we need to explore a little bit of more packages of string conversion and we will do that. And that's the reason why it is being done. Uh, but feel free to change that as a string in case you don't want to go through with that set of lines of code. And again, another thing is so far we have been uh, encoding the JSON because we are creating the JSON and sending it onto the front end. This time the JSON is coming into this method. So we have to decode that JSON value. And there are a couple of more situations that can come in. So let's go ahead and handle those situation. So let's borrow a couple of line of code first uh, because this is like uh, all the kind of a de facto. So we're gonna go ahead, work with that, and there we go. And this time we'll be changing the method, which is saying create one course, and we are setting the headers as well, nice and easy. Now let's go ahead and let me show you a couple of interesting scenarios. So let's go into the what if mode. So what if uh, entire body of the response, body is empty. We have to take care of that scenario as well. Now I'm, I'm not gonna take you through all the a nightmare of handling all the scenarios in the production grade, but these are a couple of obvious ones. You should know that. I'll walk you through just once here, and then the rest of them you can figure out on your own. So what if the body is empty? We have to do a check of that. And luckily, the request actually gives you the direct access of this body, and you can go ahead and check it out. If this is actually nil, you can go ahead and just close the response here because if somebody is making a post request, because in the post request only you can send some data and nobody's sending any data and this method is being invoked, there is no point of moving forward. So let's go ahead and craft a JSON response. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hey JSON, use the new encoder for the writer and let's encode a message. And this is going to be encode, there we go. And we're going to go ahead and say, uh, please send some data. Obviously in the production grade you have set of messages uh, that are being given to you that hey only use these messages we expect them in the front end so that's that's a whole another uh, workaround thing. Okay we're gonna go ahead and save this so why are you having issues? It says hey uh, this is a writer I do have a writer Oh, my bad, it automatically picked up new decoder. No, you should be picking up new encoder. Oh, my bad, it was just in front of me. Okay, there we go. We have debugged also, so there we go. Now, this is okay when the body is having nothing, but there are going to be cases uh, when somebody is going to just pass on a data like this. So this is absolutely a data, but there is nothing inside the JSON itself. So yeah, these kinds of cases do exist. So let's go ahead and check and move on to this one. Uh, what about the data which is being sent up like this. So we have to take care of that cases as well. And you get the idea. Sometimes we get into the rabbit hole of finding out a whole lot of thing. And that's why there are usually separate files for them as well. So let's go ahead and say how we're gonna take care of that. Now, before we go ahead and take care of this situation, let's go ahead and create a variable. I'm gonna call this one as course. And this will be of type the course, which is my struct. Okay, that's all what I want to do. 
And now let's go ahead and try to decode that values because I know I expect that data should come up into a particular structure because I'm adding into the database. And if you remember when we talked about the JSON handling, we can handle that two types. One, we can just decode according to a structure and another one was looping through that. In this case, it makes sense. We handle that via uh, destructuring that in the first way. Okay, so again, JSON is going to have a new decoder. Again, this is what we want to use. When you are decoding, we obviously want to utilize the reader because that's what's sending me the data. So I'm going to go ahead and say that, take the data from the body itself and go ahead and use the decode. And in the decode, you have to pass on a reference and based on that reference. Remember, we were passing on two values that what is the value and based on what should I destructure it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pass on a reference of this course. There we go. Now, I, I really don't care that what you give me a return value, obviously this will give me a return value. I'm gonna go ahead and say underscore in this case. And uh, the whole idea here is that yes, you decode that, uh, but I want to check whether you are empty or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that if the course that I'm having, if I run an is empty method on that, which gives me a Boolean value. And if you remember, I'm just checking for two things, not too much of the thing. If the course ID is empty and the course name is empty, it gives me a true value. If this gives me a true value, that means I get inside this if statement, I want to just craft a JSON response. So I'm not gonna waste too much of your time. I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this and paste this as a data. And I'm gonna say that, hey, I cannot proceed further. I want to just exit from this method. And again, we can change the message a little bit, something like uh, no data inside the JSON that you are sending, all in caps. Okay, that is all good, that is all fine. Now what is happening here? is although we are not taking a value as a response of this entire operation, but still the value since this was being passed on as a reference, I do have all the values inside this course. So all we have to do is now is to push this new thing inside the slice. If you remember the slice video, it is super easy. We can use append method, pass on what is my slice, what is the data that you want to append into it. So pretty simple operation after that. Okay, so now moving further, now we're going to take a little bit liberty of tutorials. Since we are inside the tutorial, I want to jump into something more stuff to teach, to teach you some of the fun stuff. Now notice here, I told you that how this uh, is method works on. So we're gonna go ahead and rewrite this one. I told you that this is how you can check up whether the values are empty or not. But in this case, I want to rewrite this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this first and I'm gonna come in the first one. And what I want to do is I don't want to check for the course ID. I want that user should be allowed to move further if uh, the course ID is uh, not empty. They are passing on this value. Why am I doing so? Because I want to manually create the course ID. I don't want to rely on the user that, hey, you are just gonna go ahead and pass me unique ID. That is unlikely the case that they will be able to provide me this. So moving on. Now we have a couple of challenges in front of us. Let's go ahead and mark them up. The first one is to generate a unique ID. So that is one case. And another problem that we have is we have to actually convert that ID into the string. This is interesting. Uh, we have already generated random numbers, but we have never converted them into string. So that's going to be a challenge. And then after, uh, it's pretty simple. Just add, or we can say append uh, this new course into courses. So there we go, plan of action is in front of us. Let's go ahead and work on with that. How we're going to generate the unique ID for that. We obviously know that I can go ahead and use the random seed and I can go ahead and say time dot now. There we go. And I can go ahead and say Unix or I can go ahead and say Unix Nano, whatever is your favorite, go ahead and use that. This will definitely give me a, a unique enough number. And I want to use the course. Remember we created a variable course. It has all the property. We will use the course ID. Now we want to use this value, but if I go ahead and say, hey, just use this uh, random dot in int n and we can just go ahead and pass on a pretty big value which is 100. Uh, this is going to be fine but again we we actually got into the trouble again. Remember the error. It says cannot use int rend value because it is of type string. So this will give me a value which is integer. This is what it is expecting a value of string. So how we're going to do that? We're going to just go ahead and cut this one and we are going to introduce you another package at uh, this one. String conv, uh, which is basically string conversion. It has a lot of properties uh, that you can go ahead and work on with that. The most famous one is this uh, ITOA. It is equivalent of format integer. So what it basically does is whatever the 
integer value is given to you, it tries to convert that into a string. And hopefully it will be able to do it because I'm pretty sure that this random number 100% gives you an integer which is convertible into a string. So there we go. Again, a little bit too much of work. In case you want to don't want to do that, just convert that into an integer and you'll be fine with that. Okay, now we have all that uh, values going on in here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, use our courses, which is a slice. And uh, we're gonna use the same method we used previously. Use the courses and go ahead and inject this new course. And there we go, we have added the new value into the course itself. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, send this also into a JSON. And we're going to say, hey, new, not decoder, come on. New encoder, you will be using a writer. And we are going to go ahead and say, encode and as a response we're going to go ahead and just pass on that hey we have just added this course and we're going to go ahead and return surely we can pass on more messages that successfully added this course and then pass on the course but you get the idea you get the point that how this is being done uh, although this return again is redundant the reason for that is because once you actually sense uh, sense uh, encoder response it automatically exits the method but just want to be sure uh, although this is no use up here but still want to give you that Okay, so quite a lot of liberties that we have taken in the name of tutorial, but yes, these are important to teach you a lot of in-depth. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.